breaking the wall of supermaterials. How biology inspires nanomechanics. Nicola Pugno, Università di Trento, Italy. On November the 9th, 1989, I was 17. And on that day, I was at home. The next day at school, there was great excitement. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege for me to be here, and I'm very happy for this. I would like to talk today about uh, uh, my last recent research activity on the mechanics of, uh, let's say, super materials. Uh, I prepared uh, four uh, examples, and uh, in particular, I would like to talk about the strongest, that is uh, graphene, the toughest, that is spider silk, the most adhesive, that is the gecko foot, and the most anti-adhesive, that is the lotus leaf. So let us start with the first uh, material, is uh, graphene. Graphene is uh, a single layer of uh, carbon atoms arranged in an hexagonal shape, and the peculiarity here is that it is the strongest material that we have. So you can imagine that the strength is of the order of 100 gigapascal, that is an enormous number. You have to think about the that uh, what we call today the high strength steel has a strength of one gigapascal. So it's absolutely very, very strong. And uh, this is the ideal value considering, let's say, a defect free material. But what happens in reality? And uh, if you roll a graphene layer into a cylindrical shape, you obtain what we call a nanotube. And if you make tensile test of single nanotubes, we measure a strength at least in the pioneering paper, we measure a strength of the order of 60 gigapascal. That is, again, a huge number, but of course, it's not uh, uh, the 100 gigapascal uh, that I mentioned before as the ideal material strength. So why this happens? So we already, um, the first speaker mentioned something about defects, and even in this case, defects play a fundamental a fundamental role. It is sufficient to say that just a single vacancy can reduce the strength of a graphene layer by a factor of 20%. So this, of course, is, uh, has a tremendous impact in uh, real application. And one application that I would like to show you is uh, the space elevator. At the beginning, the role of the facts here were, was completely neglected. And this is, of course, a mistake. There was an uh, analogy. And I would take, again, this analogy. If imagine to plan a marriage, assuming that your wife or your husband will have no defects. Of course, you can have problems. And in material science, you, have, you can make problems, you can have problems like this if you neglect the role of the facts. So you have to take into account defects, and you have, you have to make, let's say, a flow-tolerant design. And this is what we made in the past. So, but the concept of the space elevator is very simple. You can imagine a cable attached to the Earth's surface. If the cable is long enough, the centrifugal force will exceed the gravity of the cable that will work under tension. And then you can move climbers and mass at a low cost. The problem here is that you need for the cable a material with a huge strength to density ratio, and in particular, even considering the low density of carbon, you need a material with a strength of the order of 60 gigapascal. So it's something that perhaps is feasible. I will, let, I will say never say never. But you have to take into account the role of uh, the facts, even for another reason, because uh, uh, larger is weaker. Just for statistical reason. The, la the larger the structure, the larger the probability to find a critical defect, the lower the strength. So you have to take into account uh, this. With uh, graphene, we can make also other systems. For example, imagine to consider a graphene nanoscroll. If you put the nanoscroll in a circular shape, you have the self-rolling of uh, the system, as you can see there. There is a competition between bending energy and surface energy. And uh, basically, at the end, you reach an equilibrium, in particular, an equilibrium core size. And you can create a lot of systems, for example, if you are able to tune the surface energy of uh, the system. For example, you can do this with an electric electrical field. You can, uh, you can imagine to have nano channels uh, with uh, a, a porous, uh, uh, a smart porous uh, uh, membrane. You can imagine to have a nano oscillator, for example. You can also have nano motors if you put the nano scroll onto a substrate and you control uh, the system. Y there are a lot of applications. You can, you can also open the nano scroll, for example, putting it into resonance, and you can imagine application even in drug, for drug delivery in, uh, in nanomedicine. 
So now let us talk about the second uh, super, let's say, super uh, material. This is the spider silk. The peculiarity here is the toughness. The toughness is the ability of the material to dissipate energy before fracture. The number is quite incredible, 500 joule per gram. That means that it is even tougher than Kevlar, for example. And uh, spider silk is amazing. The spiders are amazing because they can produce up to seven different types of silk for different uh, scopes. For example, very strong, very tough, very stiff, uh, sticky at the same time. And uh, the final result is a spider web uh, is a structure that is uh, very, very robust, uh, multifunctional in nature, etc., etc. You have to imagine that if you make the scaling up of a spider web up to the size of, the ho of this hole, you, we can basically have uh, a, a, a web that can stop uh, a Boeing 747 because the, the toughness is uh, tremendous. So we, we are trying to make some uh, uh, analytical calculation, also some simple experiments. For example, this is a tensile test of a, spy, of a bundle of a spider silk, and there is a huge elongation. We are trying to understand which is the role of uh, the materials uh, in the final uh, mechanical uh, behavior, thanks to atomistic simulation, for example, in collaboration with MIT. And, uh, but uh, we are also especially trying to understand which is uh, the synergy between uh, material and the structure. And this is the, the novelty in this, uh, in this field, let's say. For example, we are investigating the anchorage of uh, the spider web. And you can imagine a spider web, you see the anchorage there. At the given point, basically, you have the detachment of the system. If you imagine that uh, the spider web is loaded by, let's say, distributed load, for example, wind, at the given point you have the failure. But what we, have what we are observing now is that uh, there is an optimal geometry of, uh, of the anchorage that is a function of the constitutive law of the material. So there is an optimization, a synergy between material and structure that render the anchorage the strongest and, uh, of course, this has a lot of different uh, application, even in engineering, because anchorage are, are, are of course, of great importance. importance. And uh, then I would like to show another, an, another aspect. If you imagine to have uh, a localized load rather than a distributed load, for example, an impact of an insect in a spider web. Uh, of course, if uh, the kinetic energy is sufficient, you destroy the, the web. But uh, we observe a counterintuitive, let's say, results in the sense that uh, considering what we call a ductile material, so a, a tough, let's say, material, in reality, the spider web composed by this, an hypothetical spider web composed by this material will be not robust. On the other hand, we consider the empirical spider silk, the real spider silk, constitutive law of the spider silk, uh, the, um, the robustness of the spider web is maximized. So this was quite counterintuitive, of, is of interest per se, but uh, is also of interest from an, en an engineering point of view. You have to imagine that uh, if we will be able to produce, uh, to design spider web in spider building, for example, if there is an impact of an airplane, you create an hole and uh, there will be not the collapse of the entire structure, for example. So now let us talk about the third uh, super materials is uh, Gecko. By the way, this is Ernesto, is the mascot of our lab. And uh, there is a, a, a huge ability, uh, is, uh, the addition is extremely strong, uh, is based on Van der Waals and capillary force. It's not, a, it's not based on suction cup, for example. Uh, but to give you an idea, the addition strength of a Gecko is of the order of one megapascal. That means uh, that uh, is uh, of the order of uh, 10 times larger than a, an ideal suction cup. So it's uh, is very strong, it's fully dry, and uh, it's smart because you can detach, uh, the gecko can detach in a very easy way, so it's very, it's very good. So if you, the result is that uh, if you try to detach a gecko from a surface, you need a force that is of the order of 10 times its body weight. So 10 perhaps is the best number uh, that we have in order to have a strong attachment but at the same time in easy detachment. Let me say the, here that we observe something that in gecko, something that we observe even in human beings in the sense that uh, female are smarter. We were unable to make this, uh, this test with a female because only the male tried to remain attached to the surface. <laughs> and so we were, we were able to measure the strength of this animal thanks to this. So this perhaps is another good reason to, uh, to promote science among women. And, uh, 
so uh, let me say also another aspect. So if you have a look of the, of the, of the gecko foot, you observe a hierarchical, let's say to simplify, a tree-like geometry of the, spa, of the um, sete, uh, terminating in a two-dimensional contact that are called spatule. And you see that considering different animals, you observe the same solution, and, but for gecko, the spatula are the smallest. So why does this, uh, this happen? This is very simple. You can, uh, you can imagine to write some equation, make some experiments, and you try, if you try to detach uh, a tape from a, sub, from a substrate, uh, what you can recognize is that the force will be pro to, de to detach the tape will be proportional to the width, but not to the thickness. So this, is impl this implies that uh, if you divide one tape into 100 sub-tapes, the addition force is increased by a factor of 10. So this is the reason why we measure billions of contact in gecko. Or in other words, uh, the gecko is the animal with the total peeling line, the maximal peeling, total peeling line, because the final force is proportional to the total peeling line. And uh, by the way, if you look at the number, you can recognize that when a gecko is walking, there is a crack propagation with a characteristic size of the order of, of the crack that we observe in earthquakes, so huge numbers. So this is also is uh, quite uh, amazing. So why not we can imagine to make a scaling up of this material, and uh, why not we can design a Spider-Man suit? It's not, it's not impossible. Uh, you have to, to take into account that considering ideal Van der Waals gloves, uh, you can support 500 men. So, it's, of course, they, then you have to take into account defects, you have uh, roughness of the surface, uh, you have dust particles, but still you have a factor of 100 on which you can play. So, now I would like to show very rapidly, because my time is flying, um, this is uh, a, a material, a, si a simple material that is uh, based on the principle of gecko adhesion. Of course, uh, if you can, uh, if you have to make a kind of pre-compression in order to maximize this, the contact surface, but then you see the, the, the force, uh, the, the addition, at least the, the, the shear strength uh, is quite high. So of course we have to, to improve uh, uh, the material, this, this material must be even self-cleaning, etc., etc. But about self-cleaning, I would like to, to, to talk when, uh, when I'm going to, now that I'm going to, to introduce the, the last uh, uh, material, that is the Lotus. Lotus is uh, extremely water repellent. The contact angle is of the order 150 degrees. That means that uh, if you make a, a small liquid droplet, so this would be nearly spherical, and uh, you have uh, basically a rolling on the surface. Uh, and the, the key for this behavior is, again, a hierarchical topology of the surface of the leaf. And uh, we know 200 plants that are super hydrophobic, and always are super hydrophobic thanks to this concept that is uh, depicted in this uh, slide. It's very simple, the lotus, the so-called lotus effect. If you have uh, a, a surface that is flat, you have uh, a, a liquid droplet that is not spherical, you have a sliding rather than rolling, and you are unable to remove the dust particle from the surface. But on the other hand, if you have a proper topology on the surface, you have a liquid droplet that is more spherical, you have a rolling rather than a sliding, and you can <coughs> remove <coughs> the, dust particle, the dust particle from uh, the surface. And uh, so the concept is uh, the concept is this is very simple. We are trying to make even I like equation on, honestly, but uh, we are also trying to make some simple application experiments. Here, for example, you can see we made a physical copy of a lotus leaf. You see, in the first column, you have uh, a different magnification a lotus leaf, and then we make a copy with silicon. And uh, is, is the third column is negative. You see that it is a negative of the lotus leaf. And then we make the copy of the copy with a material of interest that in this case was polystyrene. And at the end we obtain a lotus inspired surface. And the initial contact angle was uh, lower than 90 degrees. So the surface was hydrophilic, but at the end was super hydrophobic just thanks to the topology of uh, the surface. So I have to finish. These are my conclusion. I really hope to see the advent of a new area of super materials. I think the final goal is to improve the quality of the human, of, the, of our life. And this is, of course, uh, is my, I try to do, to do this, of course. And I, I have to thank the European Research Council for support and again, uh, the, for even for the invitation. Again, a Falling Walls conference for the invitation. And of course, uh, last but not least, you for your attention. Thank you very much.